Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over um, an example of a rhetorical analysis that is really effective. And we'll break down some of the ways in which it is so effective so that you can see a little bit of an exemplar for your own work. Now, the primary difference between this video and what you'll be doing is that this is an analysis of an advertisement, specifically of a commercial, while you'll be doing an analysis of an essay. But the constituent parts are still the same. And more than that, the process of breaking something down, um, looking at the way that it's structured, and then deciding how effective it is, is the same no matter what piece of media you're analyzing. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first paragraph here is the introduction paragraph. And first we see kind of a discussion of uh, what kinds of people own Subarus? So this paper really jumps right in with the topic, and that's a fair way to begin your piece. To make a broad statement about um, the thing, the topic in question, and then to narrow it down to your thesis. Now, this thesis statement says this, quote, in the 2018 Subaru Crosstrek Welcome to the Pack commercial, Subaru is not only promoting the sale of the new 2018 Crosstrek, but also conveying the message that Subaru as a company views Subaru owners as members of a tight-knit community. So this thesis is playing on Frith's levels of analysis. It's pointing out that while Subaru is explicitly selling a car, the underlying cultural concept that it's selling is the idea of a tight-knit community or a sense of belonging. So you might consider doing the same thing in your thesis. You don't have to do this, but it's one option. To say, on the surface, the author is arguing for A, B, or C, but underneath, the author is arguing for a certain set of values. So in this next paragraph, the student uh, briefly summarizes the overall commercial you can see that this is just one paragraph. And the student describes what happens, describes uh, what you would see on the screen if you were watching this commercial, but doesn't do any kind of analysis. The analysis is saved for later. And this is something that you may also want to copy, um, not copy obviously, but that you may want to imitate. Just the sense that you do not have to, and in fact you should not, do any analysis in this summary paragraph. You just want to perform that first level of Frith's analysis where you simply say, what is there? What is there in the text? What is the author saying? How are they you know, building their argument from the top down? Just summarize what you see. Next, the author moves into the first piece of the text that they want to analyze. And this is the setting of the advertisement. So when you're moving through your rhetorical analysis, the thing that you most want to avoid after your summary is to do a kind of chronological analysis where you just move paragraph by paragraph and explain in a chronological order what the author is doing. Don't do that. There are lots of good ways to structure your paper, but just going paragraph by paragraph is not one of them. Rather, you want to look for patterns, you want to look for rhetorical appeals, you want to look for anything that stands out in the text and organize according to those things. So the first thing that this uh, writer brings up is the, the role that the settings play in the advertisement and what the settings mean. And so what this author says that the settings mean is this, quote, the simplistic settings of the commercial associate Subaru with the closeness of the members within the small communities. So the uh, writer here is pointing out that the commercial uses these very kind of um, rural or small community or kind of uh, nostalgic kind of cozy, cutesy settings in order to create a feeling of cozy community. In their next paragraph, the author shifts to focus on a different piece of the, par of the commercial, but note that again, they are not moving point by point in the way that the author is. They're bringing up one core concept that they noticed, and then the next core concept that they noticed, in this case, the humor. So in this paragraph, the writer focuses on the humor 
that is in this commercial and the purposes that the humor goes to. Um, the author says this, quote, when a commercial makes the audience laugh, the audience is likely to remember the advertisement. If the audience remembers the advertisement the next time they see it, they will likely be curious about the brand it's promoting. Then the audience will likely associate that company with the commercial that entertains them, promoting brand recognition, recall, and increasing the persuasiveness of the art advertisement. So then the author goes on to another piece that they found notable throughout the commercial, which is the music and what the music means. Finally, the writer brings up uh, the fact that a dog is centered uh, really heavily in the commercial and then notes that um, Butch's presence and the things that he does evoke emotion in the audience, a huge play on the pathos rhetorical appeal. Now, while the phrasing of this sentence is a little clumsy, this is absolutely spot on that including a dog is going to evoke a strong emotional response in the audience because who doesn't love dogs? So throughout the text, the author or the, the, the writer here is taking an artifact. Um, for them, it's a commercial. For you, it will be an essay. And then picking out kind of the notable things that the creator of this text is doing. So the notable things that the creator of this commercial is doing are, you know, using small town settings, using uh, effective and, and, and relatable music, using humor, using the presence of this dog to get across this sense of community and tying a sense of community to the Subaru brand. In your own papers, you'll do something similar in that you will look at what the author is doing, what primary arguments they're making, kind of what they seem to be focusing on the most, and then looking at how they are using those things to build a certain argument or to build a certain uh, value set, both on you know that middle level of Frith's analysis and at that deep underlying level. So again, if we're doing a kind of Frith's levels of analysis here, um, this writer does the summary work here and then throughout the text um, discusses both that second and third level for each point. And please note that they never do this explicitly. They never sit down and say, well, here, here, you know, here are all the places where we see for the second level of analysis. They're just focusing on the components of the argument. What are the major pieces of the argument that this content creator is using? What is Subaru doing? How are they doing it? And how effective are they at accomplishing this task? So I hope this has been helpful. This paper will be available to you on Canvas. Um, you can use it as a little bit of an exemplar for you in terms of, you know, is this um, helpful to you in terms of organization or in how to move between the levels of Frith's analysis or just in terms of um, basic structure. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it.